Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery that scientists knew existed but haven't really seen until now. Specifically the collision between a black hole and a neutron star. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So it actually took me a while to try to recreate um, a system that might have a black hole right there in the middle orbited by a neutron star that you see moving around this. Now uh, these systems we know exist, we just haven't really seen them and we haven't really detected a collision between one until well pretty much now. Here's a slightly more simplified version of all of this in uh, Universe Inbox. So we know that black holes and black holes collide quite often. As a matter of fact, we've seen quite a lot of black hole to black hole collisions in the last uh, two or three years. And you can pretty much see all of them in the publicly available GRACE database uh, that you can find in the description below. So here you can see that there's quite a lot of black hole black hole collisions that have been detected pretty much um, every week now. We've also seen quite a lot of neutron neutron star collisions and it uh, made the news only a few years ago when such collision uh, was discovered and when we realized that this is pretty much how a lot of gold, platinum and a lot of other precious metals are made. Which of course was a really important discovery because it allowed us to understand where a lot of the materials here on earth came from. But at the same time, one collision, specifically the one between a neutron star and a black hole, has never really been seen. It was only um, predicted and theoretically possible, but we just haven't seen one until, well, a few days from when I'm making this video. On August 14, 2019, there was an alert saying that it's very likely that what we've just observed with the super famous LIGO detector was nothing else but a collision between a very massive object and a not so massive object which was most likely a neutron star. And all of this was due to the fact that it produced a lot of um, what's known as gravitational waves. These are of course the ripples in space-time that are produced when two really massive and really dense bodies interact with one another. And this is something that Einstein predicted over 100 years ago, but hasn't really been proven until relatively recently. While at the same time the collision between these two objects seem to have a somewhat high mass gap, or basically they're different in mass by quite a significant factor. In other words, it was a collision between two relatively massive and relatively dense bodies with one of them being a lot more massive and a lot more dense than the other. Now unfortunately we don't have any details yet, but we know that um, the collision definitely happened, the actual um, accuracy is so far almost 100%. And we also know that these objects were not just typical black holes or not just typical neutron stars, they were kind of different from each other. And although this might not seem really important right now, it is essential for us to understand, uh, well first of all, what really happens when a black hole and a neutron star collide while at the same time showing us that uh, these systems do exist, even though we originally only thought they were th theoretical or possibly didn't exist. And most importantly, it would show us what happens when these collisions occur. So would the actual system turn into a more massive black hole? Would the neutron star be shredded apart, creating new materials and new matter, lots of energy and lots of unusual things that we didn't really think were possible before? Or more interestingly, would the neutron star fall into the black hole and only be shredded apart inside the event horizon? And this is actually something that would be really interesting because if so, it means that when it gets shredded apart by the black hole, it's going to happen inside the event horizon releasing no light whatsoever. In other words, we're not going to see anything happen and nothing will escape. So technically this would just make a bigger black hole. And since the black hole black hole collision and neutron neutron star collision has already been studied quite thoroughly and we understand what they form, understanding what forms after the collision between a black hole and a neutron star might help us solve some of the other mysteries in the universe. Like for example, maybe this is what's responsible for creating things like FRBs, although not very likely. At the same time, maybe this is how certain very rare materials form, although possibly not very likely as well. And measuring the mass of these objects will also be very important. Because for example, we've never actually seen a black hole smaller than 5 masses of the sun in mass. We've also never seen a neutron star that was more massive than 2.5 masses of the sun. So by measuring the masses of these two objects that just collided, we'll be able to either prove our theories or possibly discover something new about these unusual objects. 
Now, in the last uh, few days, the scientists were actively looking into the actual night sky where this happened, at a distance of roughly around 900 million light years away from us, but there was no light released. There was nothing so far that we've seen that would indicate that some sort of a supernova or some sort of a very large um, explosion happened. In other words, it is somewhat possible that the collision between these two objects doesn't really create any emissions. But the scientists will definitely keep looking and try to discover what exactly happens when these two objects collide. Because one of the more interesting things that could have happened in this collision is if the neutron star gets shredded apart before it enters the black hole and then something happens to this material. It's already really, really, really ultra dense. And if it becomes even more dense through the interaction with the black hole and then gets released into the universe, some kind of material could have been created in this event, something really extreme we've never seen before. And this is really interesting for us to study and to analyze. And so currently these scientists are really interested to discover any kind of light emissions, any kind of an energy coming from this region, because it will allow us to study this um, event in a lot more detail. But even with the information that we've already received from LIGO, we'll be able to analyze the masses of these two objects, but also their spin. And by trying to figure out how they were spinning and rotating around one another, we'll be able to discover their origins. Now, what I mean by this is the following. If the actual axis of rotation of the star right here and the black hole are sort of aligned with one another, like you see right here, it would suggest that these types of objects usually form in binary systems. Basically, they're born together, they evolve together, and eventually they die together. And that's because they were born in the same star system. In other words, if they rotate in the same axis, the only explanation is that they were born from the same star system stuff and they evolved together and now they basically die together. However, if the axis of rotation for one of them is dramatically misaligned, with the axis of rotation of the other one being in one direction and the axis of rotation here being completely off. This would only suggest that these types of objects form when the black hole captures these neutron stars from somewhere else. For example, such an event could have occurred if two galaxies collided and some of the neutron stars came too close to the black holes and eventually their orbits decreased dramatically. Or such an event could have happened if uh, a nearby star went supernova, turned into a neutron star, and then a nearby black hole passed by and somehow captured the star, along possibly with all of the planets that were here as well. So this is very interesting for us to discover, but a much more interesting question here is really related to the insides of a neutron star. By analyzing what really happened right there, on the border with the black hole right before the neutron star fell apart and possibly was swallowed by the black hole. This event right here might have actually uncovered the insides of the neutron star, allowing us to see inside of these objects and understand what's happening within these super unusual and very, very magnetic, very dense objects that produce some of the more extreme matter that just doesn't exist here in the solar system. So discovering what's in the guts of the neutron stars is probably one of the more important discoveries that will come out of this uh, finding. And one of the reasons it's important is because one of the more modern discoveries about neutron stars was that inside of them is actually a type of a material and a type of a matter that might be some of the most unusually strong matter in existence. So maybe one day we'll be able to somehow find a way to recreate this here on Earth. And this is why it's important to study these unusual events that we know nothing about. It will allow us to improve our lives here on Earth. And if we're then lucky enough to also see the light coming from here and to analyze this light as well, we'll be able to determine what sort of elements were created and then to see inside of a neutron star as well. For now, we haven't really seen that, but we'll definitely be able to determine their masses and their orientation relatively soon. And once we discover more about this system and about this unusual event, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, so do subscribe if you still haven't. Maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.